Ready? Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the February 24, 2020 Selectman's Meeting. First, uh, we have RSA 41, colon 14, dash small a public hearing. Second hearing for 4 Second Street taps, tax map 223, lot 53, supplemental request for relief from deed restriction number four. The only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one family, single family dwelling with no more than two car garage. The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. The petitioner previously obtained relief to tear down two existing dwellings at 42nd Street and construct a single, a new single family home upon the property containing five bedrooms, but this supplement request for additional relief is needed based on a subsequent plan revision showing a three-car garage. Anyone out there from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, we'll move it back to the board. Mrs. Wolseley? No. Regina? No. There's Attorney Sorry. Right. Is that who's uh -oh. Okay. Okay. Did you have any comment about your uh, public hearing? Well, you've heard it all. I have nothing to add. Yeah, but it's nicer to consider it when you're here. <laughs> Sometimes it's better if I'm not here. <laughs> So, Nothing. okay, uh, are we going to vote on this? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, just a second. Another meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> just close the hearing. Okay, we're it's closing easy. the heating. The meeting at uh, what the hearing at seven o three. Seven o three. Perfect. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for coming. And our second <laughs> hearing tonight is <laughs> nine seventy one <coughs> Ocean Boulevard Tax Map two twenty three Lot fifty three one Relief from deed restriction number four, the only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms with no more than a two car garage or shall the premises be sub subdivided. This request relates to a previously approved two lot subdivision that has already resulted in the construction of a new dwelling structure on lot 53-1 and is anticipated to result in the construction of a new dwelling on Lash, a new structure on lot 53 as noted above. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a, a clarification, the agenda had a typo that's actually 741 Ocean Boulevard. It's not, it's listed incorrectly on the agenda. 971 is crossed out, Mark, on the um, it is. Yeah, the copy I have still says yeah. 971, so I'm not sure what happened. We, we got a revised one. We had, we, okay. a revised yeah. one was I was only going to ask for the final vote next uh, next two weeks. Yeah. That would be, be updated. Um, and just to the record again, Greg Ramsey for the for the owner, and I would only add that we're not proposing any construction on our property. This is simply relating to construction on the neighboring property, just mm -hmm. to be clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll move back to the board. Mrs. Wolseley? No. Regina? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have public comment. Anyone wishing from the public to speak? I think we're going to announce, actually, our uh, new building inspector tonight. We are. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to introduce the public and the board to our newest building inspector, uh, Jim Marchese. He joined us last week. I'm sorry, Marchese. I've got my instructions before. Um, he joined us last week. He's uh, got one week under his belt. So, Jim, welcome. Thank and you. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Where did you work before? Town of Greenland. <clears throat> Greenland. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Uh, a very big difference in the community, uh, 4,000 <laughs> people to 15,000 people. Uh, but I... I I can't say I like the pace yet, but the, the pace of the job and all of the different types of work that's being done here is fascinating. It's just what I was looking for. How long did you work in Greenland? Four years. Did you work with Karen Anderson? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah very nice person, very intelligent yeah. lady. Well, yeah. good. Glad, we're glad to have you here. Questions from the board? Mrs. Wolseley? No, the 15,000 is a um, very conservative estimate. 
And besides, the zoning board beat you to the punch. They introduced our nice new inspector last week, so welcome. Thank you. Regina? Yeah, welcome, and uh, as you can see, Hampton is very unique and fast-paced, so. He asked, he asked during the interviews to be busy, and I assured him that would not be a problem. Right. Well, welcome, and thanks Thank for uh, doing the job. Yeah, welcome to Hampton. Good luck. Welcome. I've heard a lot of good things about you from some of my builder friends, and uh, I think uh, I think you'll do a good job here. That's good. My my goal is to be fair and reasonable, and to treat everyone with the same amount of respect. Well, Perfect. you're going to be busy. <laughs> and the thing is, um, you're going to have a hard uh, person to follow because Kevin was so liked by so many people. And so we hope the same happens again. Thank you and welcome. Very Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Um, any other public comment? Yeah. Seeing none, uh, announcements in community calendar. Mrs. Wolseley? Um, election coming up in two weeks. Everybody prepare, do your research. Going to be exciting. And Regina? Yeah, I just wanted to add that the town complete town warrant is on the website, on the Town of Hampton website. And also, if you do Facebook, uh, Hampton in the Know. Uh, does a very good explanation of each warrant article and what happens if you say yes and what happens if you say no. So that's something that you should uh, take a look at as well. And yeah, Dito on the on the town elections in the No Hampton is is a super site. She's really insightful. She really puts everything just very objectively out there, so you can look at it and make your mind up and. Uh, Everybody who's running this has a record, so you can go back and look at uh, Channel 22 streaming videos and stuff and see exactly what everybody's like. All set. Yeah, and tonight will be my last meeting here. Um, uh, after all these years, my five terms, and I've enjoyed doing it very much. And I look forward Wait, to it. One more before the... Uh, I won't be here. Oh. I, it's my big birthday. Oh, okay. And, uh, 25? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, and it's the day, it's March 7th. So I'll be going for that. And I will be here for the election, though. And that's okay. why I just want to say to everyone here that um, be thinking about, because later on under old business, we're going to talk about who's going to be at the polls. But I will be here to be for that. Okay. And uh, so I'm, yeah. If I forgot one quick thing, uh, the town reports should be in this week or a day. Oh, there we go. Town oh, reports God. in. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> so I did enjoy doing it, and I'll be glad to be town of city. help at any time in the future. Thank you. Super. We're gonna. These we're are gonna, cold, Chris. We're gonna miss your knowledge. <laughs> yes. We know you'll be around. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, we have approval of minutes, February 10th, 2020, public and non-public sessions. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, then we have the, well, that was for the 220, I mean, the um, February 10th. Correct. And next, we have the consent agenda. We have uh, veterans credits. Uh, Revocable trust, several revocable trust, and for that, and the appointment of a health and deputy uh, health officers, uh, cemetery deed, entertainment license for Logan's Run, one day parade permit for the fifth annual run for the Ocean 5K, parade and public gathering licenses, use of town property, Permit for parking lots. Any motions? I, I have a question yeah? before a motion. A number three, appointment of health and deputy health officers. Yeah, that's usually the, uh, the, the health officer has always been Kevin. So they've probably had to change. Okay, and and then the other two are existing uh, mm -hmm. employees. Okay, I will be happy to move the consent agenda. A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, for we are going to have one more. Um, we're going to take this out of order under old business. Uh, the vote on sec. 217th Street, Tax Map 168, Lot 78, 1, release, release portion of deed restriction number 4. 
Thank you. There you go. Thank you for taking a side of water. Yes, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Really so, did you want to open up for us? Um, well, this is the, we're hoping to get the vote. Um, I was here last time, kind of presented everything. You've, you've had two mm -hmm. public hearings on it. And if you don't, I do have the plan if you yeah. have any questions. Any questions, Fred, from you, from nope. your standpoint? We're any? ready to go. Okay, so anyone so. else have any questions? <coughs> Where is this on the agenda, Mr. Chairman? Item number it's eight. under old business. old business. I'm sorry. Item eight on the back. Oh, page. okay, I got you. I make a motion to approve it. <coughs> yeah, we have a motion from Mark. Should yes. I read that? Okay. Is that okay? Yes. All right. I hereby move to modify the third and fourth senses, sentences in deed restriction number four in the quit claim deed from the town to Marguerite S. Hermada, recorded on November 27, 1984, and recorded in the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds at Book 2522, page 143, which formally re reads as follows The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line, nor shall the premises be subdivided. All outbuildings and sheds other than stables or garages shall be connected with and attached to the dwelling house stable or garage on the lot. So the same will now read as follows. The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within the setbacks <coughs> prescribed in the Hampton Zoning Ordinance except for the new 6 foot 10 by 10 foot by 10 foot high free standing storage garden shed building that is 4.1 feet from the side of rear property lines if said shed is also allowed by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance once said variance becomes final nor shall the premises be subdivided. All outbuildings and sheds other than stables or garages shall be connected with and attached to the dwelling house, stable, or garage on the lot, except for offer said new six foot by 10 foot by 10 foot high freestanding storage garden shed building. The other sentences of deed restriction number four, the first and second sentences remain unchanged. The town attorney is hereby directed to generate a document suitable for recording for the board's signature that memorializes these modifications. I'll second. Do we have a first? Yeah. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, am I to understand, um, Mark, that we she do, still does need to go for zoning relief for the shed? Uh, because oh, I heard the, it. Because of the setback, yes. Yep. So, um, though I thought a smaller shed was allowed within the normal setback. But so we go for relief? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. <coughs> have a good night, all. Thank, thank you. you. Next, we have Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jen Hale, Deputy DPW Director, for a departmental update. Just need to Chris, did you have to drive to wherever to pick that is up? No, they put them right in the back of my oh. uh, car. Oh. They, okay. they were delivered to the shop. I haven't put a case. Uh. <coughs> so you're delivering those to everybody tomorrow? Yes, so we're delivering the town hall tomorrow. <laughs> door to door the town hall. Thank you. Whoops. Thank you. Uh -huh. well, well, Jeff was handing those Thank up, um, so I don't have to stand in front later. Uh, we did get a refund check from Unitil, New Hampshire Electric Operations, Thank you, for the. Uh, 50% uh, of the value of the street lights that we replaced. Oh, nice. uh, Please present a check for $121,050. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. Uh, so that's because Thank of you. the LED lights? Correct. <coughs> the, town, the town appropriated the money to replace them, and right. from the onset, Unitil agreed that they would refund 50% of the Great. value of the existing lights. And before we start here, because I don't want to forget this, um, a private citizen has made a donation um, of $800, and they don't want to be, uh, they want it to be anonymous, and they've donated it for this uh, school resource, resource officer, and I don't know if that's supposed to go to the school or yes, this, uh, have anything to do with the, uh, the, uh, the police department. department. Yeah. So I'm going to bring the check here tomorrow. And okay. The board together. needs to move to accept that. Okay. Do we want to do that? I'll move that we accept it. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. So that's very nice for that person to do, and Absolutely. they did it. Absolutely. Just nice. came up with that idea. Okay. <coughs> Oh, thank you. Um, it's been uh, well since last September, I guess, the last time we were here for a quarterly update. Um, 
<laughs> we're going to throw at you a lot of numbers, a lot of projects, uh, a lot of values. Uh, this, some, you've hopefully got the summation in front of you. Um, Department-wise, we're not expecting any uh, retirements that we're, that we're definitely aware of. We know a number of people considering retiring, but uh, they're just literally at this point okay. thinking about it. Uh, Bill Lowney has been promoted internally to the position of assistant uh, wastewater treatment plant operator. Uh, we currently have one offer out uh, at present for a new uh, employee, again, in the wastewater treatment plant operations in training position. Uh, we still, the department still does have two vacancies for highway laborers, so if there's anyone out there that knows someone who would be looking for a position and or a summer position, because we're right around the corner from starting to fill those. Um, the department has currently uh, one bid out, that is for the Lafayette Road Improvement Project. The bids are due on March 12th at uh, 2 p.m. We also know that the wastewater treatment plant bid uh, is going to be advertised on March 6th. A pre-bid meeting is March 24th, and then a bid opening is scheduled for April 7th. <laughs> Jennifer will run over the current major projects. Uh, the first one we have up there is uh, related to the check that you all just <coughs> received. This is the LED streetlight conversion. Mm -hmm. um, that warrant article was passed, which allowed us to enter into the contract uh, with uh, Affinity Lighting. Uh, we worked with everybody involved, and uh, kudos to Jim Hafey in our office for coordinating all these efforts. Uh, we have in, done all our installations. Uh, so everything has been changed over. I think there's two lights we're working on that are some nuances with them. Uh, but other than that, um, we are very pleased to have that project completed. Uh, as many of you know, the Lafayette Road Drainage and Sidewalk Replacement Project is out to bid. Uh, we look forward to hopefully having multiple bidders for the project uh, with a kickoff in April uh, to get that started. It would start with the drainage component, and that would be night work. Uh, the blacksmith shop renovation, uh, basically we are on to the next phase of work, which is shoring up the foundation. Uh, we have to replace the sill beams and then level out the floor. Uh, that is anticipated to be done probably sometime this summer. The Park Avenue culvert replacement. That project is complete. Uh, that was a Warren article that replaced the uh, culverts in two locations across Park Ave. Mm -hmm. um, all the work has been done. The department will be reseeding and working with the rec department to do any cleanup that needs to get done in that area uh, when we have more days like there was today. And Park Avenue will be paved from Route 1 uh, to the point where we did our second crossing as part of the 2020 paving. So after March vote and if it's successful and we have the roadway money, uh, that is on that list. Uh, as Chris mentioned, the wastewater treatment plant facilities upgrades. The engineers have completed the projects. Today I saw the inventor environmental notice. Uh, we posted it on the website. We are just waiting um, to basically do the final QC on their plans, uh, meaning it's going to go out to bid and uh, they'll have the bid opening April 7th. This will be a multi-phase project, um, meaning that there will be parts of the project that go on simultaneously and then parts that will follow. Once a contractor's chosen, those schedules will become public. We'll uh, let everybody know what's happening, but it will all be happening down on the plant. Uh, the first order of business for the facilities upgrades is to take the mic and mic out of the electrical room uh, and move them into what is currently the sewer and drain uh, office space. That's where they will reside during all the upgrades so that they can stay right at the plant and be there. Um, I have been working with multiple vendors to price out a trailer space. Uh, for the sewer and drain division, knowing that that's the only place that they're going to be able to go. Uh, we're looking at getting a trailer on the side of the public works building, uh, not the side that's closest to the march, but the complete opposite size. Uh, and that would allow the sewer and drain department to have their office space, their plan storage space, their tool space, place to park while all the construction is going on um, within the plant. So that will be one of our next steps there. Uh, the Meadow Pond Hampton Harbor studies, uh, I spoke with um, all the consultants today, uh, and I also got to speak with the National uh, Fish and Wildlife Foundation. They are finishing up their 
uh, and for the grant paperwork that should be forthcoming shortly. Uh, we have had the opportunity through Malone and McBroom to obtain um, data that was done for the state of Massachusetts uh, through Woods Hole Ocean Oceanographic Institute um, for additional modeling efforts. So it's actually really good data uh, that is going to be used by both Malone and McBroom and Hoyle Tanner in developing our models. So that was something that just um, came together through the work of our consultants who have been reaching out to them, uh, knowing that sharing resources is always better. The Elaine Street improvements, that project was put out to bid at the end of last year. Uh, it will again start uh, in April, if not sooner, if we can get into the ground. Um, it is a sewer, release, uh, sewer replacement project. It will go down Elaine Street, the sewer ends at the end where Elaine Street and uh, Richard Street join. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two catch basins and a line of pipe that will also be uh, done as part of that project. And then those roads will also be paved as the 2020 uh, paving project. Um, it will be done separate. So it will be trench patch until the road paving comes in. <laughs> Um, and then we have on here, just for everybody uh, to know, that Route 101 uh, is getting paved, not by us, uh, but by the state. So when you see uh, uh, Brock's paving out there, who is also our contractor for our spring work, uh, that is for the state and where it is 101 uh, to expect delays as we get into um, the warmer weather. They are expected to start down actually on the streets, I believe, in March doing their sidewalk projects and then following up uh, with this paving project. Um, so those are the big major projects that we have um, on our desks. Uh, there's more to follow. There are um, hopefully and excitedly more to come after the March votes. Uh, so from there, uh, the daily operations. Household hazardous waste day. Um, we've picked the, and got, we have two days selected they're June 6th and August 29th. We already have a vendor uh, okay. scheduled. Those days are already booked, they're in the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, last year was the first time we had two. It worked out very successfully yeah. to have the second one. It was as well, uh, the, the participation rate was as high for the second one as it was for the first, so that's why we're sticking with both. Um, on that particular one, we also get a grant back, uh, I think it's in the area of $2,900 to offset the $20,000 that it takes to, to run that. Um, asset management software, um, let, as of the, today, there's been 41 service requests and 52 work orders. Uh, last year, we had a total of 406 requests and 459 work orders. Um, this has probably been the first year that we've actually been able to track it because we actually have and use that asset management system. Um, and we want to impress upon you that all those particular service calls and requests come in on top of the things that we normally do day in, day out, such as uh, refuse collection, um, street sweep, repairs, street sign repair, repairs, street sweeping, everything. Uh, we'll continue to track all those permits using the GIS system, and we're looking to move forward to potentially expanding the benefits of the software with the passing of Warren Article 13 on this year's uh, Warren Articles, which will allow us to track the uh, wastewater treatment plant vertical assets, meaning the pump stations and their associated components. Right now, um, that's a little hit or miss. Uh, the annual landfill closure reports, were, uh, we've received them from CMA that comes in two reports, a groundwater report and then the actual landfill closure report. I know I reviewed the uh, landfill closure report last week, signed it. Um, it both have been electronically submitted to the state. Um, and we have electronic copies in our office. Uh, currently, you're seeing the crews out there under highway operations doing, um, after the, the setup and takedown for the deliberative sessions, uh, we picked up the Christmas trees in January. And we've been making a lot of repairs on the road. I know the, the hot box has uh, been out on a daily basis. Um, Brox will be completing the town's paving list from last year. That includes sections of Beach Plum Way, Mill Road, Timber Swamp Road, Westridge 
drives, small section of Smith Road, and other areas in town. <clears throat> and as Jen mentioned, she is putting together the bid package uh, for our 2020 paving. Um, we continue to stress the importance of the need to fit up, fix our infrastructure that is under the roadways before we pave them. The department is looking forward to approval of Viracle 20, which is Lock Road, to allow us not only to fix the road, but then um, the infrastructure beneath it. Our new vehicles. Um, the whole fleet has been re-registered as of 2020 with new permanent plates. The states moved to a different schedule, correct? Correct, yeah. where we had to used to take what they call the permanent uh, registrations, which weren't permanent. They're now actually permanent. So we took the whole fleet up to get DMV and right. uh, had them all re-registered. Uh, in December, the department received our new Mack truck, uh, the, the six-wheeler. And on February 11th, we received the two new three-quarter ton Chevy pickups. Um, the other, tr this doesn't add to our fleet, it merely replaces, because the two trucks that they replaced have already left. Um, we're getting those fitted out with uh, plow blades and some of the other radios, things of that nature. We're still awaiting a one-ton truck from uh, last year's bid uh, under Article 29-23. We're expecting that to be here in March. That would be a one-ton truck we've done. Uh, currently, since late last year, our transfer station loader has been benched due to costly repairs. Um, we're hoping with the passing of Warner Article 22, we'll be able to replace this vehicle. Um, for those that don't know, that's a, a leftover vehicle that actually worked on the landfill when we had it in, way back in 94. So um, we're getting all the life we can out of the equipment that we've been blessed with. Sewer and drain division uh, ended in 2019 with 332 catch basins cleaned, 662 feet of drain line inspected and cleaned, five drainage structures repaired. They replaced 452 feet of drainage pipe and installed 66 feet of new pipe and two new structures. In addition, they completed 98 sewer inspections, cleaned 14,435 feet of sewer line, responded to four sewer backups, repaired 79 sewer structures, and improved 25 new connections. There was 110,252 feet of sewer line uh, also replaced throughout town. The majority of that being the new force mains. Thank you. Good point. Um, in January, they cleared a 51,000 square foot drainage route tension area. Um, there's a number of these around town that need uh, brush removal, going and maintain the outlet structure, things of that nature. Um, they raised and made repairs to sewer and drainage structures on High Street and North Shore Road and provided 64 underground utility locations and completed 12 construction inspections. For the wastewater treatment plant, the flow for 2019 was uh, 939 million gallons. That is only 92% of the flow that we experienced in 18. Um, some of it is due, we believe, to, um, well, there was less rain, but on top of that, we believe that there's less infiltration, especially with the projects that we've already uh, implemented and put in. Uh, correspondingly, when you get um, about the same amount of water. We've got the same amount of sludge, 2,998 tons of wet sludge we dispose of. Uh, it's only three tons higher than the prior year. So, and amazingly, uh, two tons higher than two years ago. So, <laughs> for some reason, it stays the same. Septage received, that's the raw material that we get in from not only this community, but other area communities that pay us to dispose of it here. We uh, ended the year with 1,901,600 gallons, which is 99.8% of what we received the prior year. So it pretty much uh, stays the same. Uh, the, over, the major factor that improved at the plant is what we call the BOD, biological oxygen demand. That is a function of how strong the waste is that the plant receives. <coughs> we do have a a limit. Um, I can start tracking this in late 17, uh, totally through 18. We were down uh, 
we had a daily limit average for the whole year, 4,350. That's 74 percent of what we got in last year. In part, we attributed that to some of the improvements that have been made at finest kind, but also when you can reduce flow into the plant, at the same time you also reduce BOD, the load. Mm -hmm. It comes with it. So as your flow goes down, your BOD load goes okay. down. That is a good improvement. It's a great improvement, <coughs> uh, especially going into the point where we're doing a $11 million upgrade. If those numbers keep tracking the way I hope they do, uh, it forestalls halving how quickly we'd have to do phase two. Yeah. That's all. Uh, Amazingly, I know I've sat here a dozen times and told you that I don't know what the status is with our actual permit for our wastewater treatment plant. Fred's chuckling. Um, out of the blue, uh, the EPA called us within the last month. We had a nice phone conversation with them on February 19th, a conference call. Um, they're going to come up in March and actually uh, view the plant. They've got a number of inspections in, in this area plan, not only at our plant, but others. <coughs> They've got a renewed commitment within the EPA to get rid of the backlog of permit pl plants that don't have permits or current permits. Ours expired in 2007. We and a number of other towns and communities have been operating on a just what they call a continuing basis, um, but they are in fact uh, getting ready to wrap that up. I am pleased to say that there was no discussion about any additional or other regulatory things being added to the permit. It sounded like we were just going to move forward. The only question they had was, do they approve the plan for 4.7 million or 4.9? So Wright Pierce has uh, written a letter for them that is in uh, draft form now, getting ready to be sent back to them. And then just to be clear, just for anybody listening at home and for everybody else, we do have a permit. Um, they just didn't give us a new permit when the other one expired. They just said keep <laughs> the other one. Uh, they were very quick to tell us that on the phone as well. Well, you do have a permit. It just hasn't been looked at or changed. Right, in a, in a, in a, number, in a number of years. We've got clothing on. Are we talking bureaucracy here? <laughs> Take the transfer <laughs> Yes, um, actually, nope, the one that we yeah, got to do okay. that here, we just missed one there. Um, we are also happy to report that we have a new permit with Finest Kind Brewing. Yes, okay. uh, we have entered into permit with them as required by the state and our sewer ordinance, uh, the new ones that were passed. Uh, the installation of the two digesters to pre-treat their waste prior to releasing it to the town system is operating and providing the acceptable results that we were looking for. Um, the permit is valid till August 2000. Don't read the notes there. That should say 20. Uh, not 16. I will correct that before I post these. But uh, we did another six months just because uh, it allows us to really uh, dig down at the numbers and have that much more data behind it. Uh, and then the like, last section here is our transfer station. Um, as you all know, it remains a constant area for material disposal. Uh, this year we have been individually tracking pretty much everything that comes in, uh, knowing that we're going to be doing something. Uh, with it all. So we are doing monthly reports from the management end. Uh, Ryan has uh, helped set up all the spreadsheets to collect the data and enter it. Um, we've gone through and we were able to grind out the old uh, stump slash brush pile. Brush pile. Um, we got that done at the end of last year uh, and right now we continue to turn the leaf piles uh, for compost. Um, one of the new things that we have, and it will be rolling out this week on uh, the World Wide Web and the web page and Facebook and all the other great things, is that we have um, worked with uh, Mr. Fox to do food composting up at the facility. Um, not only is food composting a way to decrease the number of tonnage of trash, uh, but it's actually great for our environment as well. So. We're allowing any resident to come in with up to five gallon buckets uh, to be disposed of in the barrels that we have, and then we will work with uh, Mr. Fox to collect them and empty them uh, in that way. And we're hoping that the program will turn to be a big success and we'll get as many barrels as we need because the cost is minimal compared to what we're finding to dispose of the trash. 
Uh, so this is an alternative way to help uh, try to reduce those costs. I just want to be clear, that composting is not going to occur on site. He no, it is, takes the he material takes it away. away. So, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, compost it there. How many did you facility. say barrels? So, well, we have enough barrels right now that, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think we'll be fine uh, with residents, but we're asking the residents to do five gallon buckets at a time. At a time. At a time. Yeah. Right now we have four 96-gallon containers to Great. receive the material. In. And if we need more, we can get more. But we figure the five-gallon bucket is a nice limit to see uh, how people want to start. And they always can reach out to Mr. Fox uh, directly as well uh, to get advice on how to uh, store it at home in the meantime uh, before they bring it to us. Mm. Good. Are you going to put someplace what they can add to it? Exactly. So right now we have a poster that will go together exactly what can go in the five-gallon buckets. It is very specific. It's food scraps, and then there's three other things that says right on it um, what it has to be. In other words, it would have to have been a compostable paper plate, so you would have had to known that it was from that. So we're really just trying to promote the food waste mm -hmm. and scraps at this time uh, until everybody you know gets a good handle on it. Um, our refuge at the end of 2019, we were down 66 tons uh, compared to the previous year. Um, and recycling, we were down 49 tons. So while our actual waste and recycling materials were less, we all know that the costs went up. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to be the, the <coughs> rising theme. Um, our new waste collection trailer, which was part of the 2019 warrant, uh, is due to be here in May. Um, the facility that we had uh, ordered from had a fire, so there was a delay uh, in us getting that one. Uh, if you recall, a few months ago, it's quite a few months ago, I was here asking for permission to apply for a DES oil recycling grant. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to report that that finally came in. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be able to purchase the filter crusher uh, for the transfer station that will allow us to crush the filters, uh, get the oil, and reuse it. Right. Uh, which will be another uh, reuse for us. And then our solid waste contracts. Um, upon the vote uh, in March, yeah. we will sit and begin to negotiate uh, with the vendors. And that is our report. Yeah. The, um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to say before I uh, open this up for a comment, um, I had a, uh, a reason to be at an engineer's office and there was some discussion about uh, people you know dealing with all the things that have to be dealt with with the water and the sewer and the this and the that and um, they were saying about how so many communities vol uh, have people that volunteer to do things and you know the, but technically they're not always people that are well trained but they said you don't have to worry about that in Hampton because you've got that Jen Hale <laughs> and, uh, I thought that was so nice That's it was awesome. kind of a surprise you better watch it Chris you might be after your job I, no, Thank you. I know I'm in training <laughs> and uh, it was very nice to hear that so people are talking and you do a great job thank, thank you. you Mrs. Wolseley ah yes I have a little list um, the finest kind uh, digesters, have they put in three and four yet, or is it not yet necessary? They don't, they don't need three and four yet till they request okay. another increase in wastewater okay. produ pro okay. production. So at some point, but, yeah. okay. And I have a few other things for you. Um, first of all, you have a memo here, the request to sell unit 63. I love it when we're getting rid of older vehicles and taking them off the, uh, the rolls. Uh, the articulating sidewalk snowblower. Yep. Um, with the town's purchase of two sidewalk tractors with snowblowers last year, we no longer have the need for the above noted piece of equipment. At the time we purchased the other pieces of equipment, it was not prudent to trade in Unit 63 because several vendors we spoke with would only give us $500. Earlier this month, the Public Works Department was contacted by a gentleman with the town of Pembroke inquiring if we had a spare sidewalk tractor they wanted to sell. I suggested a price of $5,000, and he accepted it on behalf of the town of Pembroke. I love it when we're clearing used vehicles off. Thank you, thank you. 
Next is I sat in on one Mary of Mary Louise, can I jump in back in? Please. You you read that. It re I don't have the authority to. I threw that price out there. I don't have the authority to do that. It really. Oh. It it, it needs your approval if. Well, well, there is a motion. So. Oh yes, this is bad. A matter of fact. So I'm. Pr I would like to make that motion if everybody would be happy. Um, pursuant to Town Ordinance Chapter 469, Article Roman 2, Section 2. Section 3. Yeah. Sorry. The Board of Selectmen waived the process of selling by sealed bid or by public auction Unit 63, and that we herewith grant the town manager the right and authority to sell the above noted piece of surplus equipment as is. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. That's wonderful. I love to see the old vehicles cleared off. I'm not done yet. On the blacksmith shop, um, just would you make a little note somewhere to send a memo to me for the Heritage Commission when you've got the this, this stuff for the sidewalk of the blacksmith shop lined up uh, in the fall or whenever you do it, just so uh, the Heritage Commission is uh, interested in seeing the blacksmith shop uh, rehabbed, and that would be very nice. No rush, just whenever you, you get to it. Okay. Um, I talked to, um, I've had calls from people on Mill Road, so I talked to Carl McMarin because the road is pretty <laughs> not not very nice at this point in time and he said they're going to pave it in, I guess in April sometime and then the final coat of hot top will go on next year so I just that's my boss hmm? <laughs> we are working with Aquarian to do something uh, that we similarly did down on Manchester and some other places in town we did it on Lafayette Road mm -hmm. whereas we have some work we want to do and we don't want to pave half the road uh, they're working to put their services across the trenches yeah. so uh, pushing them through uh, we have an agreement with Good. Aquarian as Good. part of their excavation permit that we get to make the final say and that chances are they'll be writing us a check uh, and we'll do it under our town pay excellent bed. excellent but people have been growling a little mm. bit some of yeah winter have takes had a hard to toll on the trench path and that's all they have we there. met with them about two weeks ago on that yeah. Yeah. Because people are complaining some of them have had to go in because their cars had something or other crunched. Um, I went to one of Jen's presentations uh, on the Route 1 rehab project. And that was absolutely amazing. And I just, I, it, it's going to be an incredible project. I have no idea how you figure all that stuff out. <laughs> But I was very oh, you impressed. You know, when we do. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed, and you did an, a, a tremendous job, and that's going to be some project. Oh, and we're going to need everybody's patience as we go yeah. through. Yeah. And uh, uh, when you have a few minutes after the sidewalk or whatever it is, would you get a nice fresh printout for us of the vehicles? And you did such a nice job, uh, you know, using color coding and whatever. But not until you sort out your yep. vehicles you've got now. We'll but I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a fresh print yep. of Public Works vehicles. And I thank you both for what you Virginia. do because it's, it's busy. Thank you. Yes, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up was Lafayette Road. I went to the meeting that was hosted by the Chamber at the Old Salt, so I saw your presentation as well. And yes, it was excellent. And I know there was a question that was there, and I'm not sure whether you had time to talk to the community about it, about whether or not we could potentially pave through the, do the work for the summer. So I did receive two or three uh, feedback from different businesses downtown. Um, Chief Sawyer had made the first recommendation instead of stopping before Memorial Day, stopping before 4th of July, get that extra uh, three and a half, four weeks in, uh, which is what we did right into the contract. Uh, so whatever bidder uh, is successful, that's when we were looking to do the first phase. The three that did come back uh, to us, one mentioned, eh, you didn't know how you know it would affect summer, especially yeah. because of the pedestrian part of it. The work that would be done in the summer would be the sidewalks. So 
having a cement truck in one lane, you're somewhat closing one lane <laughs> during the day, night. So I didn't get a lot of positive feedback. Um, I think what's also important is that whatever bidder is successful, we need to be able to work it with their schedule. Uh, because the way it was written was uh, April through July 1st, I think is the few days before 4th of July, because 4th of July is on a Saturday, and then starting up that Tuesday after Seafood Festival. Allowing them to do the drainage work in the high street parking lot during the summer. Uh, so any of the changes that we needed down in that area, because they'd be off of Lafayette Road. Uh, so something we'll definitely have to address uh, come March, right after the bid is due. Thank you. And on the vacancies that you have now, you're also still going to be working for part-time summer help soon. Yes. Yeah. So if there's anyone interested in that, is it just best to send them down to? They can contact uh, Jamie Sullivan through the, you know, okay. the town right. hall or, or Call contact DPW. us. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. And then um, right, you answered that question. Oh, Elaine Street Improvements. So Jamco is awarded the bid. Yes. And that is going to start, you said, hopefully April. April or sooner. If we have weather like this, we're going to want to start okay. um, yeah. as soon as we can. Uh, it also helps out them in, in just getting their season started. Uh, I don't see it really happening maybe the last week in March. And again, that's if we have right. that awesome stretch of weather. Uh, but eight to ten weeks is the construction period. And that's to replace the sewer? All the sewer um, on a lane street starts probably about 100 feet in from uh, the main road and then can wraps all the way down around uh, and meets Richards and goes across uh, to our facility. And how you guys have had that on your plans for a while, right? We've had it on the plans for a while, but um, in sort of the, this was the perfect spot for the funding that we had. Uh, to get it done and to look at the roadway conditions as well and go, okay, let's get this done. Okay. All right. And good news on the wastewater treatment plant. We've gone down in the uh, total flow, so that's good, right? Total that flow will help. more importantly, BOD. Yep. BOD, so that will help. Uh, yeah. Definitely helps us manage the plant better. And the first part of the plant project that's going to be done is moving the mics out of that area. Yeah. And you know, and talking it over with Wright Pierce, even though it's, you know, it's going to get let, you know, we have a bid opening in March, and hopefully we'll have a contract by the first week of April. There's a lot of lead time for some of this equipment. Uh, the equipment that's in the headworks, a new grit uh, separation unit, literally three to nine months. So uh, initially, you're going to see it's going to be a slow start, but then once that equipment all starts to arrive, um, it'll be uh, hectic over there. Well, I know you guys have your work cut out for you, and I appreciate everything you do. And I think the Mr. Fox thing is great. I yep. think that's going to. I think people will do that. That was one of the and, uh, recommendations from the Solid Waste Committee, and we were happy to. See and it that will help with the weight of all everything too, right? Because yep. that's probably and, most of the weight. And we can grow the process we have. So while we have four barrels now, we have the room and we can we can do more. So we'll want to encourage everybody to do what they can. And on the solid waste contracts, that is Warren Article uh, 19. And to cover the additional costs for mm -hmm. that, we are, that's a Warren Article that is using the unassigned fund balance Correct. for funding. So Warren Article 19. Yeah, one of the vendors called, or the bidders called last week and said, you know, how come we're not sitting down trying to negotiate out a contract? And I explained to him that I thought it would be irresponsible for us to try and enter a contract when we weren't, yeah. we didn't have 100% of the funding guaranteed. And they respected that. And the other thing is the contracts are not up till June 30th, anyhow. So um, Perfect. we're all waiting that vote. Thank you both for all the work you do. Thank you. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, thank you. Very detailed report. Thank you for all the work you guys do and everybody in the department does. Super. Thank you. Vacancies. <coughs> have you talked to uh, Winnicunnet or the SSD program? No, I yeah. have not done any of the reaching out for that, summer that might, yet. The SSD, the SSD might be a great place because they do have the 
the kids over there that are learning mechanics, and you might have a senior over there that may be looking for a job. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> you know, kind of, uh, I had Mill Road on here. The uh, LED lights. My wife loves them. She's seen them all over town. But she noticed that the, the private trailer park out behind my house doesn't have them. Is there any way for a private entity to purchase those through this program, do you know? They can purchase through Affinity. Um, so they get a bill and it's through Unitil, so they could approach uh, Unitil and do Affinity. I know that Jim did run into one or two uh, similar instances where it's a private entity that would own the light across the street from their business. Um, the hows and whens on how that all happened, uh, we don't know. but. You know, they reached out and asked, "Hey, would you be willing?" Uh, and Jim's working, you know, with them to work with Affinity. And so there's a couple of the other churches too. I know that have outside lighting, and it might be behoove them to I, try to go. Oh, we, we'll look into it and see what we can get out there for to share. Our so story. I don't understand what what is that about? They're, they're private lighting. The, the, the lighting project we had, the street light conversion. Yeah. We have some private streets, and we also have some churches and, and other built places that have lighting in their parking lot. And they pay and, for the and, poles. And they pay for their lights and their poles. We yeah. might want to encourage them to, to get with the same yeah. program yeah. as an energy conservation thing. Those, those large floodlights, the most expensive part to them is that they come with a demand charge, in other words, because right. when they fire up, they require so much electricity. I know the two that they replaced in our yard, they were 400-watt floodlights. They replaced them with a 150 watt LED, and there's probably a third more light wow. out of them, and it and doesn't less require the demand charge. Exactly. So if we can encourage some of our other, our local businesses or, or or private roads and stuff to do that. Yep. When sewer and drain moves out of that building and goes into a trailer, when the wastewater treatment building is back, are they going back there, or are we going to? No, we're looking for. Uh, to make improvements within our building, and also we're looking at the site overall. Uh, we have a contract with Wright Pierce to do a site recommendation analysis. Where could we put the additional garage space that we need, the additional office space? Um, there was a number of people that approached me at the deliberative session and said, uh, "You know, this is how come it wasn't in this year's work, and what was I doing about it?" and urged me to continue forward with those plans so we have in fact we've always been moving forward with it just we've accelerated it a little bit be nice to get their vehicles out of the weather and it would be they, they'll, they'll mm -hmm. last longer and 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 get the that office out of the right. the wastewater treatment plant mm -hmm. i mean i think uh, anytime you can limit people for being in there the better off you are yep other than that um everything uh, oh the um mr fox how often are they going to pick that up? Do you know just right now? It's every Friday. Every Friday. Okay, that's. I was just. You know, somebody had asked me how long it's going to have to sit there. And well, that guy in the back, he he actually runs. <laughs> we did bring him along. We're going to bring him up in a little bit. But I'm glad. Uh, I'm, that, I think that is a good program. I think once we get the who, what, where, when, and why mm -hmm. poster out, so that people can do that. Hopefully, our our community will embrace that and try to start to do some of that. The guys at the, the uh, up at the uh, transfer station now already do a great job, and this just helps makes it better. Yep. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You had a very thorough report, and it seems like everyone enjoyed it. Thank you for coming in tonight. Oh, we're not oh, done. Yeah, yeah, done. Not done. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we can go now. Yeah. Uh, we right, get out. We'll see you later. Um, <laughs> we were here about a month ago talking about. Um, there again, saw waste the carts, the cart collection policy. I explained to the board at that time that I had drawn up a, if you will, an SOP internally for the department and an application form for determining um, how we would like to go forth with these carts. Um, I think most of you have or this cart service collection policy draft agreement. Um, I started it. It's gone under some healthy revisions. Uh, Jennifer had a, a major hand of it, um, and, and and as did Ryan, and that's why we brought him here tonight. If there's questions that you have, operational questions, uh, Ryan is here to answer those. Um, essentially, uh, well, we, 
go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. We took the ordinances that have been passed by this body. Uh, like, for instance, what's in under Chapter 761, we looked at back when uh, the board decided that uh, condominiums in excess of, of up to five units could get 10 carts. Yeah. Uh, and also the board's decision back in January about, you know, maximum 10 carts per location. How would we implement that? How would we handle that? How would we move going forward? We are not opposed to the 10 carts per, per location. We think that's a workable uh, item. Um, but we had a number of uh, discussions internally and externally, and so that's why they're within this policy. So the procedure or the determination policy would start with, and I'm going to read from page uh, two. two. Is that where you'd like me to start? Yeah, if you start here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm only going to interject for a second because it's just a little bit of what's in front of you. Um, the determination process, what you're reading here is what would be the policy if the board concurred with what we're recommending. So this is how we determined we could use the 10 cart maximum, the more than five condos, uh, what would need to be adjusted to that. And ultimately, uh, it, it ends with what he's about to read, which is A through G. Um, and then what would occur if you couldn't meet those. Right. So the first, you know, to qualify to get carts and up to up to the 10, a, under A, you'd have to essentially be on a town accepted road already. Under B, um, have access to a town road where the carts can be reasonably stored. In other words, um, I'm trying to pick it right off the bat of, of a site, a site that probably has little or no frontage, but that they could still bring their carts out to the street. Um, that's what we would cover under B. But there again, um, I know what B was now for. When you looked at the Haven Drive, the mobile home community set of interior private roads. Do I want all 120 carts out at the end of Haven Drive? No. And the reason being is it would cut down on sight distance and otherwise create a pedestrian or vehicle hazard. And in other words, I don't think we should be doing that. Um, the other thing is under C is that you, the carts that we would issue you, you'd have to be able to store them on your own site. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was a place on, I think it's H Street, they never would bring the carts in. Um, we eventually took the carts. Um, if, if the other thing that it would uh, get into and with D is that if you don't have, you might want 12 carts, 14 carts, 20 carts, or more. But if you don't have the ability to store them on your own yeah. property, uh, you've, you've technically maxed out your site uh, to no fault of the towns. Um, and then under E, um, if there's been a previous planning board decision or agreement with the town, um, we're saying no. But uh, under F, we're also asking that we'd have a building permit issued by the building inspector or have been appro previously approved by the DPW director or their designee. And the reason why this condition came in, and this is one of the things that what we were talking about in the last couple of weeks, what would I do if somebody who has a business on Ocean Boulevard and has three vacant lots for parking if it, if it was just on a parcel basis, they could actually come in and apply for carts technically on a vacant lot. And we're saying no. If, you, if you're not generating refuse at a, at a particular parcel, no carts. Right. But at the same time, we then got thinking about <coughs> what about the Hampton Beach Village District? What about the carts I stage at the end of uh, Atlantic, Concord, places where people come in off the beach? There has to be some mechanism for the director to say, you know, to control trash so it's not lining, being thrown on the street. I think it's prudent to put one at the end of Concord or Atlantic, locations like that, or to give the beach precinct, let's say, a set of carts so that people 
don't throw it on the sidewalk as they're leaving the beach. How about a uh, private parking lot? That that might be someplace well, that's a vacant lot, but it's as long as it's... And, and that, that's in here, but we can cover that under... So, number of carts under G is single-family residence, two carts, one trash, one recycling, apartments, up to 10 carts, combination of trash and recycling, apartments, multi-structure, um, I think it says it's multi... No more than five units, no carts or collection services. Now, understanding that this this does not cover every single case and situation within the town. Right. Yeah. I am recommending that just like the board issues parade licenses, entertainment licenses, gathering licenses, that they entertain solid waste service agreements so that take that mobile home park that we were talking about we en if, if you're in favor we'd enter into an agreement with them but at the same time if the road they'd have to one indemnify the town two and make sure there's insurance that indemnifies the town and three if the road situation in within that particular community either doesn't get plowed or the road doesn't get main maintained or it becomes a jeep trail we we have an out to say it is no longer safe or prudent for the town's equipment resources and manpower to go in those particular communities we've also and jennifer's can probably more elaborate on this we've drawn up you know a, a host of sites that we'd like to consider with you and discuss with you which ones probably you should enter into uh, yeah. a service agreement or, yeah. or what? So that's a perfect segue into if you're looking at G and you have the those three criteria. So obviously you'd have to meet these space constraints, have their ability to place them, have the ability to store them, um, not have been a development where you already made an agreement that said you would take care of your own. But basically, residential single family. When I say that, I mean lots. Think parcels like lot lines. A single family home with lot lines could have two carts, one trash, one recycling. In your current condo policy, you use the words condominiums and you say less than five may have service and thus carts. But it's only the word condominium. And one of the things that came out in the Solid Waste Committee is, what about the apartments? What about the business condominiums? So if you're thinking one parcel, and they have one building, but there's more than five businesses in them, how should that be handled? So we've really tried to think about all these different things that come out. So in what you're seeing in G, is it's taking the condominium policy. Yeah, but isn't the condominium already been told that they can't have it because there's more than five condominiums? Right, so what I'm trying to do here is expand it that it's, the word apartment goes in. The, what if you have um, you have some places down on the beach it should be like that have units. two, so that's what this says. So this is saying that it's apartments, multi-structure residential or business on one parcel. So whatever way you look at it, if there's more than five, and I always was going things, you know, five things on the parcel, you wouldn't uh, be eligible for the service just like the condos weren't before. Letter finish. So I think it's so it's just important that you, when you're looking at G, you see those three things, and that's where it came from. Um, it came from what the board had already done, but it also stems from going back to the direction in January. No more than 10 carts. And no more than 10 carts, regardless of who you are. So G gets you to 10 carts as your maximum. There wouldn't be more than that. So we told you last time we were here, there were 77 properties that had more than 10 carts. Some 11, some 47. So there were 77 properties. What you have here is what I'm calling the handfuls of making sure you understand that if this is the way you would go, 
this is what would happen to that property right. because they're so unique. So I did. Are, are you handing them out tonight? So that's it was part of the package that I gave you. I don't think I got it. Oh. Yeah. I'll give them no. mine. It was. I have multiple. I, 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 can't. I have That's what I was looking through my stuff. I. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. I have I don't So the reason that those are there. The, the reason I wanted to just walk through these is so that you could understand um, how the decision can affect the different properties. So if you look at this first one, it's a restaurant. It's another restaurant. What this is is the equivalent, and we're at 725 Lafayette Road. This is a business condominium setup. So you have multiple buildings, mm -hmm. multiple businesses that have more than 10 cars. Now, on this site, I believe there are five, and this is where we'd have to go through each and every one of these, there's more than five businesses. So the decision in G would mean that this parcel would not have cart service because they would not meet the criteria. So that is one example. Uh, the next page, five, uh, 507 Ocean Boulevard. This is um, this is just one of those ones. Okay, we have the condo policy. Currently, it says five or more. You don't have service. This is eight condo units. They have twelve carts. Should we go with this policy again with G? How we've written it, this building would no longer get service. Now I keep saying no longer would, unless the board chose to say. You know, enter into a service agreement with these ones that have had it because well, they had it prior to the these, are, these people were supposed to be having recycling. Right, so is and it this is where recycling now. Uh, no, they I get don't. trash and recycling yes, pickup. So that's why never, I'm trying to clean them up. supposed to be that way. So that somehow this morphed into this. Yep. I know all the people that lived there. It was never supposed to be that way. So it did morph, and yeah. that's why we're saying we're trying to go back to if. It's five or more does not have service. It's five or more. So this property would be affected. So do we want to take them one by one? So we have the first one, now we have the second one. I can tell you that, you know, I don't well, agree with that. We'd question. like to, so to see, see what I envisioned happening, and Mary Louise, let me, three seconds, is that This process lays out where if these people want to continue this service, they have to request it of you. Hey, they have to put it in writing. Right. We'd like a Solway service agreement to enter into a Solway service agreement with the town. I would like. Yeah, but the, are they going to pay for it? I would like the town attorney mm -hmm. to draw up this agreement. Mm -hmm. And if you think that you want them to pay for it, that's up to you. Um, you know, the next one that Jennifer wanted to bring forward is, you know, it's because it's maxed out, it's Cinnamon Rainbows in the corner. That's one unit, one parcel. But there's five businesses in there with little or no ability to store carts. Do we, we're asking somewhat for clarification. Do we or do we not want to tell them? Why all? do we go over all of okay. them fast? Because it looks like it, this is going to be a discussion. I just have a point that I would like to bring up. Mm -hmm. I want to see this town turn over all but residential Okay, let's collection get to go over this, Mrs. To private things. Let's do the whole thing. No, we're no, going crazy no. here we're in gonna the public have, works let's department. Let's let them go over this. I'm not done yet. I have a right to speak. Okay, okay, we're we're this but we're no, 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 but no. before we go through all the hysterics, Turn this over to private Okay, callers. that's why we're going to go over this, Mrs. Wilson, so they callers. can have their presentation. Okay, continue, please. Well, we shouldn't have to go through well, all this stuff. We're we not asking to. for a decision, market, uh, a blanket decision. Okay, over. well, we got three separate things there, so why right. don't you just so continue? Let the people so who do seven. this for a living... Okay, Get Mrs. Paid. Wolseley, we're going to go, we're, you're going to have to be able to say all what you want after she's done all of them. So 507 is just an example of more than five units. And, and these are not the only ones. I'm giving you the types of things that we it's have ridiculous. in town. So this is an example. Uh, 931, 
uh, is again, it's a, a business situation where you have more than five things on one parcel, so they have more than cards. The next one at 989 uh, Ocean Boulevard. This is condominiums, uh, 28 condominiums that receive full um, trash and recycling. Ridiculous. Has been for a long time, and I believe that uh, their papers even said that they would because it was prior to the um, policy. The policy, excuse me. 12 Atlantic Ave. This is a situation <laughs> where I was telling you, again, in those G's, this is two buildings on one parcel the total of which is over five units. So again, if we were to go with it, uh, they would be more than 10. Um, this next one, 10 G Street, this is an example where I wanted to use the word apartments. This is 17 apartments. They have more than 10 cards. So it's, you know, so it's all these things that if we want to be consistent. No, no this we, has to, this just, is please just yeah, go over The next one is uh, Gookin Court. It's more than five cottages. No, 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 no. Uh, the next Guten Court is five cottages, but they have more than 10 barrels, so they do not get more than 10 barrels anymore. Yeah, that was per your policy. Carts. 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 And then the next one is Kings Highway. Uh, this is Redcoat Lane. So this is a private road. We drive on it. This is what Chris was talking about, where we want, just like Haven Drive, uh, we want a service agreement if we're going to be going on a private road and continuing to pick up something like this. And those are the examples that we want every, we, we need the board to understand that the direction that we have comes with conflict. Is, that's not red code. That's not red code. That's red code, sorry. Is, uh, butternut Water 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 what, why Water are we Blades putting the name of it? Yes. Yeah. Why are we putting on, public yeah. works through all this nonsense? Anything other than residential or duplexes should go out to private haulers. Let people who do this for a living make some money on it and get off all this stuff. You're going crazy for nothing. Just say no. Residential, single family residential or uh, duplexes. That's it, turn it over to private. Pe these people are in business to make money and you shouldn't have to go through with this. You're gonna go crazy, you got enough on your shoulders. We've got to, to clean the slate, we've got to set a specific date, we don't need you going through this stuff, nor do we need you handling state waste and I'll go there when we start mm -hmm. talking to the state on the joint operations plan. I absolutely object to continuing having the town, you're wearing out your your uh, re, your employees and you're wearing out your trucks and there's no need to do it. The town is so big now, we can't keep shouldering this responsibility. God bless you, you're working hard on it. But clear clear the decks, okay, let's hear what set a date. Regina has to say. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that this is a sample of all the different types of scenarios you have going on. Right. It's ridiculous. And it's out of this this policy, which I, I mean, I haven't it's really no had. It's no policy if they're going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. Well, no, but they do have within the policy service agreements, which they did talk if, to us if about. Wanna, if you want to enter that. I'm not, not saying I want to do anything. I just seen this thing about 10 minutes time. ago. I think one person has the floor. I think they should be allowed to okay, speak. Okay, then, oh, then please don't speak. Let her speak. So if we the board was to choose to go with this policy, Public Works is saying because these have already been getting picked up. Ryan, could, can I ask Ryan a question? Ryan, do you think that this policy in place would help you? I think there'd be some consistency to what, what's happening. You know, right. I mean, we've always just been going to pick, pick it up. It's what we've always done. So I think there's definitely some consistency that to this. And how do you think it would reflect on the staff if uh, the service agreements for a build, for these buildings? I mean, if the service agreements were in place, then we'd just continue to do what we've been doing if they, if they were given that. Yeah, but now they would have to pay for it. Well, I would think that no. would be part of the deal, yeah. It's still not That's going another to pay. God. As, okay. as I feel about it, uh, the, everything that this 
board, I don't understand why you're still working on this because the board had voted months ago for this not to be this way. It had voted years ago not to be more than five units, condos, whatever you want to call we them, apartments, they're all the same. It's right. It doesn't matter if someone, it, in order to have a right in Hampton, it doesn't matter if you live in an apartment or if you live in a condo that you've paid a million dollars for. You all have the same rights. And how can we have a policy when what's been making the policy not work is this? This makes no sense to me right. and is very unfair to all taxpayers. And why it's gotten shuffled and along here to this point, and when we've been, I've been trying for the whole last year to straighten this out. And now it's the last meeting I'm going to be here, and it's still not straightened out. And I'm sure it's going to probably change again after the election again. Uh, depending on who's elected, but I think this is totally wrong and it makes no sense. Yeah. Jim? Yeah, thank you for the report. I think what you've done is you've shown, as we've said before, that it's a very complex issue that needs, does not lend itself to simplistic answers and it needs a complex uh, development of, of issues to go. And, and what you're asking for is that we look at this, that you work with the town attorney, is this what you're saying? To drop the service agreement, yeah, right. Because I'm not going to vote on this tonight because I think oh, we need to. And we're not asking no agreement. On it. That, that's all I got to say. That I think it's it, it, it's a good. It's the a good the start, reason it's or the incentive, problem. as Ryan said, is to bring some consistency to this. If we're trying to prevent, I'm trying to prevent for my staff for our department, the headache of someone coming to me and saying, "Well, you pick up Haven." that mobile home park where Haven Drive is. Mm -hmm. You do it because for safety reasons, you don't want all 120 carts at the intersection, God. especially where the kids collect for uh, buses that, in the that morning. That shouldn't even be so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is ridiculous. And if we elect, you know, so if someone like that, some parcel like that was to get service, how do we then say yes or no to someone else? That's the conflict within the department. But the other thing is we're reminiscent of a year ago when this room was full of people who said if we, you know, you picked it up before, you should continue to, the board put together a solid waste committee. I understand that they didn't come up with a defined or definitive answer for the board, but this is. Because it was this complex. It was because of this complex. So it's our attempt to bring but some. It's Rusty's time for discussion. No, I think they've brought in some good points. Um, it, it's unique. There's no other community that has this type of situation in it, and it's because of the way we are set up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I look at like you said, the trailer park. You know, they haven't got room on any town street to put right. the number of carts they have in front of their property, because all they have is basically the, the width of the street. Um, and so do we do we uh, not pick those up anymore do we some of these places here are, are apartments that have you know, or condos that predate the rule of doing it so do we take that away from them and I again so I think we need to ha hear more about the service agreement I think we ought to have the attorney look at it because the attorney's been looking at it for years. What's going to well, happen is someone's going to come and there'll be no garbage pickup anywhere yeah. before long. That's because people are. Sick well, and I just don't want to see. I don't want to see our, our our streets start to get cluttered with with dirt either and, well, and, and you know, garbage. Someone needs to say something about some people that do it right. Now today, when I was waiting at the bank window across the street, now there's probably. I think it's just unless there's a subcontractor in that it's only one bank. So as one business, should they be picked up? Mm -mm. No. And no, as one no, the one businesses are picked up everywhere. So if yeah, you're one business, you can be, get picked if this up. Was one business, well, they have be. a trio, a trio, tri, 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 yeah. trash can in the very corner of their property, yeah. and it is no bigger than the bottom part 
of two uh, phone booths, it looks like it probably would hold about at least four very large uh, things, but they do it. They don't mm -hmm. ask for stuff. And I think there's people all over town that don't ask and have there their trash lot, picked up. Lot that don't. We have, I mean, yeah, there's a lot, a lot that don't because that, why should they? Because no, they, I mean, they're lot, getting it for free. Uh, no, a lot of our, our restaurants do it because it's much easier for them. They can put it out there. They don't have to worry about it. They don't have to clean their carts. They don't have to... They, yeah. uh, they they bring them in, which I, I think is great. Well, and, we, but we, and we need to have a policy to do that. Some of these places don't have the ability to store no. a dumpster. And that's true. But the thing is, what's going to happen is unless people are stupid that are doing it like that bank across the street, why should they waste money? I think that your business that you're arranging here and you're going to be charging people and stuff, towns aren't in, supposed to be in business. Yeah. They're not supposed to be uh, right. working against some other big uh, trash pickup company. Uh, and I think a lot of other people that aren't uh, bothering to have the trash picked up I think that they will be in the future. Uh, I would if I was in business. Mrs. Wolseley? Let's go back to private enterprise. Let ha, You have people whose business is picking up waste. Let individuals hire whoever they want to pick up their trash. Enough. We've gone through all this foolishness all these years. Public Works has more to do than fiddle around with trash. The time has come, knock it off, uh, private haulers, and get it out of the way. You should, this is a terrible burden on you. And you shouldn't be putting all that stuff through the transfer station. You shouldn't have to handle that. You shouldn't have to have those huge big trailers dumping everybody's waste. Let's get off the dime here. And I go to that bank every day. I have never seen a, uh, I have never seen right. a trash hauler there, right. ever. But they any other further comments? Yeah, I have a so private enterprise. Let's just do so. If we were to take this agreement and end after G, and get rid of all this, no, G is what their limits that they're proposing, which is for everyone. I don't, it's up to ten cards, which is what we agreed on. Up to ten cards. Well, make that we don't motion. want ten cards. Now's the time to do it. We've got well, to cut it off. The the I'm hesitant. The only reason, but no, I'm not going to make a motion to do this until we've given some type of a considerate. I mean, how long have we been picking up some of this trash for people? Quite Since they've been there, yeah, and they've been lucky to have it. But yeah. enough is enough. But and we let them have it. So yes. before we take it away, we're going to tell them what our plan is going to be. Exactly. That's that's the only thing that now, I have. Are you making any of these judgments, Regina? Because these are some of your friends here. So my friends, the very first page you can look at. You just yeah, said that's, you not I, well, yeah, that's not there. fair. Well, she works there. That's not fair to say that. that. She no, works there. This that. is how many she out of the oh, 77 yeah. properties? I don't care. Uh, to me, it is fair. There's seven examples there. Seven, seven examples of the 77 th properties? It's all wrong. I've said uh, here all First of all, I just said I'm not making a motion. Did I not clarify that? I said I would like to, before we make a motion, I would probably be okay with any G getting rid of the entire service agreement. And letting, giving these people a heads up, giving the taxpayers a heads up. I don't understand They've what could possibly a heads up be wrong. For a long time, at least yeah. the last three years, we've been talking about this that this was already supposed yeah. to happen. And now happen. we have a policy. Even though there's been motions made, it hasn't happened. It's yeah. wrong, wrong, wrong. We need to set a deadline, July it should, 1st. The deadline right, was set. set deadline, We're already into the notice. second year of the deadline that was went that missed. Right. Well, we've it's got totally wrong. I just can't understand it. And they shouldn't be put through all this. No, and Enough. neither should I. And that's Enough. why I'm not running again, because I'm getting sick of being part of this. It's totally wrong. Public Works has better things to do than collect trash. We're not in business. We're in business to be a town and do things, not mm -hmm. being trash and making up agreements. It's totally wrong. I thought the agreement was going to be up to 10 cuts, which is no, what this would do oh, if we matter. would take There's... out the rest of it. We don't want well, any Well, then parts. let's do it. It's We've already done it, and no one's been doing what's been, what the board has made Could motions for. Could you redraft this simple. for next time so no. we can vote on it without no, that? No, because no. I won't be here, so I've gotten cheated as being a selectman. Yeah. We don't it's want totally to redo wrong, all this as far as stuff. I'm concerned. We want to say no private haulers affect and we have, July first or whatever. Well, well what's gonna happen is the public is gonna come in and make a motion and no one none of these commercial people are gonna get picked up eventually is what's right. gonna happen. Well we will stick with the uh, you know the policies that have been passed um, yeah. and, and implement them. And yeah, we'll yeah that's what you should have that's, already been doing. And we'll work it's already been out. done. 
So, okay. anything else? The only other thing that it was a matter of business was, and it's up later, is the uh, permission to, uh, I believe, uh, McCarran Drive. McCarran Drive, thank you. I'm trying to think, Dockham Builders. <laughs> Dockham Builders, I believe, submitted a letter to the board uh, requesting uh, permission for this department to go on to that residential street to uh, collect uh, their carts. Um, I think all but one house has carts. Um, we did note that it's, it has not been, um, it's not close to being accepted by the board. That may occur mm -hmm. later this year after final paving. Yeah, they've done all their sewer work right. and sewer inspections. They have final coat left to put on the roof. Right. Mm -hmm. But it is normal practice or has been since I've been director and you know, when Keith was here. Uh, to request your permission to enter onto because essentially it is still private right, property right. Mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose of collecting those carts so that the residents don't have to pull them up the Woodland Road anymore. Why have they been issued carts if they're not? If the road it is, is a not? normal process that once a building permit has been issued okay. by the town, we would then issue carts yeah. so that they could yeah. have sanitary, you know, uh, ways of getting rid of their trash. But we do ask them. We did it on Litchfield, uh, a number of streets. We asked them to bring them mm -hmm. to the already accepted street to such mm -hmm. time that uh, they either request this yeah. letter or the street is accepted by the town. That's single family? They are single family. Okay. Question, so what is our policy now? We don't have one. We have a policy, it just well, hasn't been being followed. Because it's private property. Yes. In, in in some cases already still really considered a construction zone yeah. um, until it's really wrapped up in other yeah. words the curbing's in all the sewer mm -hmm. and they're out of the street as far as with construction stone and dirt piles and lumber piles yeah. and things of that nature then we feel safe enough that we can put Ryan would feel safe enough going down those streets with his equipment to collect those carts. But what is our policy going to be? You're saying to enact what we've already agreed on for our trash limit. So what is the trash limit? Because I thought we were waiting for a policy of standard operating procedures, we're, which we're we just, just received from Public Works that is not making the majority of the board happy. We're just one and one on, on single family residential structures. It's just one and one. Yeah. And what about policy. everything else? What, how you, you're telling us that you can't just do it a maximum of 10 limit bins. You're gonna have so you're no. bringing us a way to do it and it's not no, satisfying we, we, the majority we, of the board we so can what? we can and will continue to only pick up 10 carts per uh, location uh, and so what does location mean yeah that, that's yeah. the question that they had that was right. the question so and that was a very trying. good question right. and that should have been discussed and looked at and answered so I, for instance the, the, like if you were to ask me tomorrow this the cinnamon rain blows block okay which is a restaurant, Cinnamon Rainbow, is a real estate office, mm -hmm. something else. Ten carts? Mm -mm. Well, Period. So, I mean, they might have 14 now, they're going down to 10. But that's and not solving the problem. Well, and how many we, units that's are That's our direction. There. It doesn't, no, yes it does. It how many matter. units is it? That uh, one is, it has five units. Five okay, units. it's five units. Okay. It meets the standard. We mm -hmm. don't want, that was, a, I took what you were do, uh, lobbying for, as a transition, we no. have got to stop okay. picking that's up commercial not, okay, waste. Mrs. Wilson, that's not what's on that. We're trying to get to the. Uh, aren't You're not you trying to see what the uh, policy is, Regina. Right, and I know that we had a maximum of ten limits. So right. yes, no, that's ten two to t into ten is five units. So it's right. supposed to be mm -hmm. five units. But that's they can't five keep units. doing that. Well, they shouldn't have fourteen. We, they should have we, ten. No, public works can't keep doing all this stuff. Mrs. Wilson, stop that's picking up commercial waste. We're talking Let about. It go the, to, uh, the American way. Okay, of, Mrs. Wolseley, we are haulers. talking about what the policy is in Hampton now. Well, it ought to be set up. Well, at, you voted getting, for the five before. By I need to tell going you. to private haulers okay. for non-residential trash. Well, with the last time we voted about yes. affirming the ten barrels, yes, and you I voted thought for that it. was a transition. Well, it wasn't. You were wrong. You didn't pay attention. Sorry, uh, no Rusty. Wonder. 
first of all, I thought we were a little bit past this, and we were talking about McCarran Drive to allow us to pick that up, and we were looking for the waiver to do that. The waiver, so that, yeah. you're looking for that first, right now. So Ir I, irregardless I, of this policy, yes. Right, you're looking for that, for irregardless of the policy. So I'll make the motion that we allow Public Works to go on McCarran Drive and pick up those eight yeah. to ten houses that are there. Yeah, that's right. It's so, our houses. That's right. Yeah. So I, first but, I made that motion. I'll okay. second it. But, but only if the street is in sufficient condition so the men that's and public the public works. works they already said, said that. They've we already said first, it has. We have a second. All those you, in favor? Now, I want that stipulated so we it, understand. Or Mrs. Wilson, go ride down there. It's a big road. I'm not going to go riding okay, down there. We anywhere. have five. And are you going I don't to vote? want them in trouble. Are you voting for, against, or are I you want against? clarity here, and I want to understand that I am happy to have public works uh, go on. We're voting We're right now, so do you want to vote? We're not, uh, we have Public four Works people voted is for. going to go into a residential neighborhood as long as the road is sufficiently complete so it does not. They've already made the judgment it is. You, you okay, do yes. you want to vote for or against Mrs. Totally Wellesley or do you no, want to abstain? Potholes. No. no. Excellent. Okay. She's, it's unanimous. Thank you. I Thank have you. one more. Yeah. Well, I was up. And, and, and so going on, on your situation that you just said that they have building permits when they put new houses in on it's a private road and stuff like that uh what happens when they change a trailer out up in the trailer park Do they have to get a building permit for that yes so right now we are considering <coughs> all of the trailer park as one unit mm -hmm. however there is 126 126 units in, the units in there and they've each had a building Crazy. permit for each one of those mm -hmm. and again that's a private road that we've allowed people to go on right I, that's where your rubber the road is right now. Right. Exactly. But I, I'm picking up only two cars at each residence. Exactly. But I'm also going on a private road, which mm. is against. And what, so that's why you wanted this. That's why you want the policy. That's, that's why you want the policy to cover the service. Cover, the the service, the service cover part. you and to cover us. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to the get. The service at. agreement was not intended to allow people to go above these limits exactly the service agreement was intended to cover us on private roadways that we have historically been doing mm -hmm. such as the butternut hollow the, be on private. the trailer haven. park the hemlock haven Water and a few glades. of our other examples of the 77 i only brought to you these in these things not to say we should have a service agreement but to explain to you that with notice those people would no longer be getting service and that we'd all be on the same page when that notice went out. Because when it happened a year and a half ago, it was our direction, send out that notice. Right. And we sent it out and mm -hmm. it went a boat. And so we're trying to be very forthright and say, okay, here are the examples. We're not <coughs> saying they should have a service agreement. We feel that the service agreement is meant for the private roads for that one condo that actually their doc said they were going to get it there more okay. and i understand that so yeah. that was yeah. that was our intent and that service agreement was what was going to allow so that non-conforming use to continue mm -hmm. sort of like mm -hmm. the zba and it wasn't but that moving to see the right. condo projects that already have it in correct documents. and that moving forward it would be as regina's to g you know it, it would go through um, that policy which encumbers what we've been talking about um, in the first place. So maybe more to just think about and we can go back and... I mean, that's why it is a draft and it's... I'm, I'm, I personally did, wasn't thinking this night that I'd get approval to that. I thought it would go on for, you know, more in-depth discussion, rereading the impacts of it and that's, what does council think? Yeah. Because. I don't want Unfortunately, to though, it should have happened like a year ago. I and think not, it should have happened. It's been sitting around ago. for a year, and to me, something about it stinks. I, I can't help but feel that. I've been telling the staff that it should have happened in June yeah, of 11. Yeah, and it's, I'm not saying it's your fault. Right. No, But it's no. been, this is, it's things just get pushed around yeah, this way. Right. Like, I hate to say it, because I don't want to mention, because I'm probably losing customers right now. <laughs> but I will tell you that the ones that are right beside, they would like to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you could have a lot more pages there. 
And this business can right. be a and that's growing why we big success. Trying to say they but it's not a town to. business. It shouldn't be a town business. We, we've got to get public works out of the mess. And this, go so to I could homes. go right to, through these and just point how the other people are getting screwed that live next door to them. Private haulers. Private well, haulers. Well, the other people I do have private haulers. Good. But what's the advantage? Well, why should they? They should come and get because the trash. Because it's not the, the job of this community. I know, community but, but the board allows provide. it to happen. Well, it, this has been going on for years, and now it's time okay. to cut it off. I, don't think it's, I think date. if we could just get it to go by what's been no. voted on by the board to do, no, we wouldn't have this problem now. All right. So I wouldn't waste any time on that for the immediate. No. Uh, I, yeah. We have God a, love you. We are moving on to other You've things. You've been going crazy always, but, with uh, that. Yeah. No. Um, no. We, as I said, we just brought this forward as yeah. draft document suggestion. Mm -hmm. Uh, stand to yeah. level the playing field, uh, like yeah. Brian said. You're wearing out your vehicles. The you're policy. wearing out your employees. Uh, you don't need okay. this. You've got right. enough. Did you want thank you. Um, thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank amazing. You. Since it. I've been here, you've been on the board. So <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck at, on one thank end, you. Jennifer. It's going to be a challenge. We shall see. Um, and next we have our patient. Oh, poor Christy. <laughs> yeah, I think she fell asleep. This should be invigorated now. Okay. <laughs> Christy, no controversy. Yes. Okay. Well, there is no controversy. I'm here to do January financials, which are based on last year's budget. So there isn't really too much to say. I will make it quick um, for the sake of Ed waiting back there. Like I said, this is comparing everything to 2019 because we don't have our 2020 budget yet. Uh, revenue for the month came in at $544,866. Motor vehicles were $369,629. Uh, interest on taxes at $6,803. Building permits at $11,017. The highway subsidy at $64,702. State water pollution grant at $20,279. Departmental income at fifty five thousand five hundred and sixty two and the interest on deposits at eleven thousand nine hundred and six dollars. On the expense side, you'll find that we are nine point five one percent spent or over budget by two hundred and eighty three thousand and ninety five dollars or one point seventeen percent. Once again I just remind everyone that's two thousand and nineteen budget numbers and I also would say um, at the beginning of the year, we end up paying a lot of uh, semi-annual and annual payments for like software contracts and things like that. So we always tend to run over um, at the beginning of the year. The recreation fund is has a balance of $235,768. The cable fund has a balance of $251,010. Private detail has a balance of $231,285. The EMS fund has a balance of $253,477. And the wastewater system development, uh, the fees collected in 2020, total $4,740. And that is yeah. my report for January. Mm, that's a short one. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Wolseley. Nice job. <coughs> Thank you, Christy. Christy, excellent work as usual. And I'm going to make some comments based on uh, things I've seen being said about uh, the uh, use of our unassigned fund balance and the war in using warrant articles to get funded from there. So Christy uh, put a worksheet together, and I'm just going to – I have everything listed out on what warrant articles we've been taking money from the unassigned fund balance for. I'm not going to go through all those right now, but I do want to say that um, – in 2017, we used $600,000 to offset the town tax rate, and we used we had $200,000 in unassigned fund balance. Yeah, well, everything that I'm seeing out there is going to get addressed tonight right now in public. So uh, 2018, we used $420,000 in unassigned fund, uh, unassigned fund balance voted for warrant articles, and in 2019, we had a little over $581,000. Most of these, if you look at them, were for infrastructure projects, IT, yeah. public works, 
Um, suggested for 2020, we have appropriations of slightly over 1.3 million to come from the unassigned fund balance. Consistently, the town portion of the tax rate has decreased, so I don't see reasoning why we would use unassigned fund balance money to offset the tax rate that has decreased. I'm talking about the town portion, that's the only portion of the rate that the selectmen control. So the town portion of the rate from uh, 18 to 19 decreased to 5.92 from 6.27%. The effect, now I had some help with Christy on this this afternoon, the effect of using one million from the unassigned fund balance to offset the tax rate would calculate to roughly 150 deduction in a tax bill for a 500,000 assessed home or $282 a week. I would argue that getting necessary projects done for town departments and town offices without having to raise additional funding as taxpayer money is well spent. The estimated 500,000 left over from the 19 budget calculates to 1.69% underspent on a $27.6 million budget. I would not argue that the budget was overstated. In both the proposed operating and default budgets for 2020, Wages make up 44% of the total, insurance is 12%, retirement a little less than nine, and benefits 2% for a total of 67% of the total budget. That leaves roughly 33% for standard and unforeseeable operations of the entire town of Hampton. As of 12-31-2018, audited financials, we had a total of 14.9 million of unissued bonds. As of today, we have signed for the force main bonds, and this resulted in an additional 300,000 in the operating and default budgets for 2020, and will now be included going forward. With this an additional 300,000 added, management had to take away from other budget line items to keep the tax rate leveled out. We still have 11.6 million of unissued debt for the wastewater treatment plant, which we had Chris and Jen talk about tonight. And when this bond eventually comes online, I would argue that would be the time to designate it an unaffund balance appropriation to offset an increase to the tax rate. Also, if the board chooses to do so in November, additional money from the unassigned fund balance can be designated to offset taxes. However, I would prefer to see some of this money to be directed at the DPW Road Improvement Fund. Something to think about. And Christy, thank you for your help this afternoon to make sure that I was right on, and I just wanted to give that message out there tonight. Yeah, it was two, $2.80 whatever cents. You said 200 Oh, two dollars so, and eighty-two cents. A yeah, week. I just wanted to clarify that for you because yeah, so the, the hundred and fifty was correct. It's one hundred and fifty over the year, and that calculated I think two eighty-two or two eighty-eight a week, two dollars and eighty-eight cents a week. So that is, uh, and we're using that money instead to get some things done around town. So I think it's money well spent. You got carried away. All that money. I did. I like numbers. Jim. Yeah. Thank you for your report. Uh, good job. I don't have any real questions on it. I agree with uh, what Regina said. I think that that that. It is a philosophical question on what it's used for. I think we're making good use of it, but people have differences of opinions, but that's good. And I agree with Regina. I think for the past four years, our tax rate has stayed basically level. Yeah. Low. And so, dropped. or dropped, but basically level for overall. And we're not seeing the spikes and, and drops mm -hmm. and spikes and drops that we used to see. Yeah. And I think the people appreciate that. I think, but they also appreciate the stuff that's being getting done in this town exactly. that wasn't getting done for a long time. And so I, I, I agree with you there. Thank you. Yeah, and you know what? There really isn't been that many spikes and drops either because I think seven years went by in a row that it actually went down uh, or stayed level uh, up until, and, pro and that was last time I counted, that was probably three years ago. So it really has stayed level for some time. Um, the problem is, is like what Jim just said, and I agree with Rusty and Regina too, yeah. There's a lot of people out there that are voting that don't agree. They don't want to see the money taken. They look they look like they're being shortchanged. Many people at the budget committee feel that way, that you know, they we uh, that they weren't included or whatever, that we just take the money out and spend it. There are many people that don't go for that. And I would say it's probably the majority of the taxpayers from what I've seen through the years. Mrs. Wolseley? If you go back in time to 2007, when our new manager, Mr. Welch, was horrified at finding the cupboard was bare, he has made a, an extraordinary uh, effort over the years 
so that we're sitting here talking about a nice, happy, healthy fund balance. And this has taken hard work, and it took quite a while to get us on a stable footing. But Fred has done a tremendous job uh, after he was uh, horrified to look at the, at the empty piggy bank when he came on board. Anyone, any other comments tonight? Thank you very much for coming in. Thank I you. appreciate it. And um, next we have Ed Tinker, who's also fallen asleep. <laughs> Now he's awake. He'd like, he'd like to. <laughs> I'm here this evening to um, present a proposed land use change tax yeah. for 105 Toll Farm Road, the, yeah. the brewery. Um, Got it. Yeah. So uh, based on changes to the property and basically the original site plan and how it was drawn up, um, uh, there's some land that needs to come out of current use. Um, and again, based on the fact that uh, they limited the, the original site plan, um, it, it now appears 1.25 acres needs to um, be added to their primary site, which would disallow all of the acreage on the property um, other than 0 .88, 0 0.88 acres of wetlands. So um, a land use change tax has been uh, drawn up for the board in the amount of $58,830, which represents uh, 1.25 acres of primary site um, and additional 7.87 acres of uh, residual or backland. If you have any questions. Mrs. Wolseley? No, nice job on that. Regina? I'm good, Ed, thank you. Fred, you've been working on that, right? Yes, sir. And yeah. what's your feeling on that? Well, I gave the figures to our assessor uh, after we evaluated the entire property, we've also talked to the staff of the owner. Uh, they understand why we're doing this. Uh, in fact, the, they were set up, they had only 10 acres of current use, which means if they took one foot out for some other purpose, they violate the current use law. So mm. they did take some land and use it for other purposes that were not in the current use law, which when we investigated and found those, it required us to in fact assess that under the statute except for wetlands, which we're leaving in, because that can be land of any, any acreage. So we believe it's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Do we need, need a motion? Thing? Yes. Yeah. I'll make a motion that I'll we second. accept Ed's proposal. Mm -hmm. Second? Second. I second it. Regina, second. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And next, we have Bob Dockham, Dockham we, we Builders. Are, we are oh, that's that. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. Um, and we have the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the last date for filing abatements for property taxes is March 1, 2020. Mm -hmm. The last date for the filing of exemptions for town and precinct property taxes is April 15, 2020. Those interested in such filing should contact the assessing department for the proper forms to be filled out. The 2019 annual town report is here. And we, I'm displayed tomorrow morning uh, upstairs in the front hallway uh, for people to come and take. Please remember that the town election is Tuesday. March 10th, 2020 at Winnicott High School, the dining hall from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Absentee ballots should be applied for from the town's clerk's office. And uh, here are a few other tidbits or items. The fire department has announced that uh, one of our dispatchers, Cassandra Levitt, has successfully completed a comprehensive leadership certificate program and it's one of the very few people in the United States that in fact has completed that program. Mm. So yeah. she should be uh, thought of with, with great courage and foresight and ability as far as doing that program is concerned and, and being recognized nationally. Good. The Executive Council of the State of New Hampshire on February 19th voted or authorized to grant payments to uh, the town of Hampton totaling $4,727.94 mm. 
the used oil collection, which we talked about a little earlier this evening. That's officially been done by the state. And uh, yeah, the, they, the Executive Council also uh, authorized the five states standards and training and emergency medical services to enter into a grant agreement with the town of Hampton for the amount of $9,817.11 for the implementing of uh, Project FIRST program for first responders uh, in our effort to reduce overdose fatalities and, huh. and the outreach and for distributing of Narcan and other products uh, at, at risk to individuals. And I was notified today that everybody in town should be receiving in the next week, sometime between March 12th and March 20th, uh, these things that we start going out in about a week, uh, information with regards to uh, the uh, completion of the census materials oh. for 2020. So look wow. for those in your mail. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Questions on the town manager's report? Mrs. Wilson. No, thank you, Fred. Regina? No, just in regards to the t annual town report, on page 21 of the town report is future challenges for the Public Works Department, and it's about five or six pages long, <laughs> and it shows all the uh, infrastructure repairments that are needed in the town of Hampton. So if you were to pick up the town report and question any of uh, this money getting spent on useful projects, I would ask that you maybe look at that report. Yeah. Jim? Uh, very good. And Rusty? Good report. Yes, that, that dispatcher is one of two in New Hampshire that have that recognition. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very, oh, yeah. very important. It's very prestigious. And I would say congratulations to the dispatcher, and she must take after her mother. And it could very well be the case. Congratulations to the dispatcher's <laughs> father, also, <laughs> which is Rusty, in case anyone doesn't yeah, I, know. Yeah, no one knew that. And yeah. she's done a nice job there, so everybody should be proud of her. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your report. I Thank appreciate you, sir. it. And um, moving on to old business. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, you had already taken up the matter of the 217th Street um, uh, early on in the meeting, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Boyd had a question about some of the language in the motion having to do with whether a variance was needed. And so in the time since we were last covered the subject, I, I, I think he's probably right that no variance is needed. So For if I might. Shed? Yes. Thank you, sir. More paper. Okay. Yeah, we did this last week, I mean, uh, two weeks ago. I so are you going to call and let them know? Uh, so are we going to vote, Mark? I think, I think they'll be happy with what, what I'm going to suggest to you. Okay. Uh, which is, uh, and I appreciate uh, Selectman Barnes making the motion so nicely that I drafted, but now we can actually cut some words out okay. of uh, what it will be changed oh, to read. Yeah. Uh, if we, if uh, there you could just entertain a motion, Mr. Chairman, to um, amend the board's prior vote to strike from the language to be so that it strikes the words, if said shed is also allowed by the Hampton mm -hmm. Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance once said variance becomes final. Okay. Because under the Article 4 dimensional requirements in the zoning ordinance, uh, footnote 28, it indicates that um, any accessory building being 100 square feet or less in size and not greater than 12 feet in height shall meet a minimum setback of four feet on both sides and rear of the property in all zones. And the diagram that was provided some time ago to the board showed this being, um, it's not less than four feet, it's 4.1 feet from the side and rear. And the square footage is less than 100 square feet, it's uh, 77 if you include the overhang. So if that motion could be made to amend the um, amend the motion to strike those words that I mentioned. I appreciate it. Do you want to do that? I'll second Regina. Regina. Yeah, I'll make the amended motion. Okay. Thank you. And I have a, a redone modification for the board to Did sign. Do you want to read it or? You need a second on the vote. I yes. Second it, yeah. Okay. And vote. there's no need to read it? Yeah. Well, we have the Can copy. I just say I amend my motion to remove? If said shed is also allowed by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance, once said variance becomes final. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. I appreciate that. Excellent. Now, is that? That's oh, you need it. Oh, one. Very good. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. We need to sign it, Fred. Yes, we do. Okay. And you had something else? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I, I, once you get to new business, there's an item that says <clears throat> approval of easement to Aquarian over Loy Drive. Uh, that item need not be should not be addressed tonight. Uh, we could not uh, we could not reach an agreement with Aquarian on the uh, appropriate language. So we we'll take that okay. off for tonight. So we take that off for tonight. Okay. Rick, I have one other old business. Can I do one thing? You got other old business? Do you have anything? No. no. I just have a quick update from the EPA. I forwarded my communication with them to the town manager. I'm waiting to hear back from D.C. Public Affairs Office in regards to specific questions I have in regards to why their assessment of PFAS contamination mm -hmm. does not quite line up with NHDES and State House legislative proposals. Yeah. And I will inform the board when I get word back. Good. Okay. Um, any other old business? I got one new. Oh, what? One new, if we don't have okay. it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so we don't have to do anything about that. Um, okay. So, new business. Did you have anything? Oh, I just want to check and make sure that we're meeting next Monday night for a yeah, regular we'll, meeting. We'll go over that after as other old new business after. And I'm glad Mark's here because I know I've talked to both Mark and Fred about this, um, and actually I think most <laughs> of our delegation agrees with me as well. There's a uh, bill in the House right now to repeal the Housing Appeals Board that was put into the budget last year. And I've been communicating with a lot of, not just Hampton, but commu and it doesn't actually really affect Hampton, but I feel that Concord should not have an appointed bureaucratic board overriding decisions made at the Sorry. locally elected Sorry. level. <laughs> so they're coming up to go to the committee next week, I think. And since we're not going to meet, I think we're not meeting next week, I'm not sure. Yeah. I would like to make a motion that the board authorize Town Manager Welch to write a letter on behalf of the Hampton Board of Selectmen in support of SB 735, repeal the Housing Appeals Board to the Senate Committee, with a copy also addressed to Margaret Burns and Cordell Johnson at NHMA. I've been asked, since I'm going to be on the Legislative Committee this spring, mm -hmm. by other communities if I could get some. I guess people aren't really talking to NHMA about it, so if we could perhaps make a motion to send a letter to the committee in NHMA, I think it would for me. do a lot of good. Yeah. I'll second. Okay, questions? All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Anything else? Um, after closing comments, Mr. Chairman, if a motion could be made to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small c reputation and small e litigation, I would appreciate it. Okay. So do we have to make a motion for that? Uh, have, yes, and then a roll call vote. We have the time. Have any okay. closing comments first? Yeah. Or any yes. Other? Well, did you want to make the motion? For well, that? we'll make that after the closing okay. comments. Okay. Um, so, because we're, we're going to be going under other old, other new business, and so we're going to discuss about, so there is no meeting next week, is that it? You're not scheduled for a meeting next week. Well, right? I thought there was a meeting. Well, we need to well, schedule that's why one. We should be meeting, meeting every Monday night, and it's not a holiday next week. Okay, Thursday. well, we have to decide who's uh, going to be there uh, for the, the, at the polls. Um, I will go at the end. It's not the polls uh, next Monday. Well, no, I'm talking, oh. Yeah, that's right. We okay. still have a meeting on the 7th. Yes, yeah, so, uh, and there is uh, one nine. on the 9th. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have a meeting so on the 9th. So are you going to be here on the 9th? I will be here on the 9th, okay. and that's why okay. I need to talk about it now. So uh, at yeah. the end, I, I will talk. Uh, everyone that pick one they want, but I would like to be there at, towards the end of the, um, and I will go back to sign the ballot boxes, because I know Mrs. Wilson doesn't like to go. You're talking about the election? Yeah. Yes. Well, why can't we do that next Monday night? That's because I'm not going to be here. We're not here next Monday night. Well, we should be here next well, Monday night. Then let's have a vote of the board to see if we're going to be here. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we don't meet next Monday night as our usual schedule. Ridiculous. Well, that's well, already what the schedule says. True. Yeah, it already says that. It already says that we're not yeah. meeting. Yeah. There. So, so we're we talking about on the 9th. On the 9th, I will be here uh, later. And uh, 
I will be here so you don't have to leave your house, Mrs. Wolsey. To I sign love the leaving my house to oh, go to a regular if, meeting. Well, we what about signing having. the ballot boxes? That's what I'm talking about. Because if you drive, well, Regina it. and I were there till the end signing the ballot boxes. You weren't the only one. For the most there. recent yeah, one. Well, that's we, the first time I've seen you there. That we way. need three. Yeah. So I'll be there. I know. Yeah, uh, Regina's going to be there. I'll You'll be, be there, there, Mary Louise. So we had three. Well, if you're going to be there, Mary Louise, I won't bother. Well, that's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so I'll be there at the end, and I can be there in the. I mean, I like being there. So yeah, I can, I can be there during the day too. Yeah, so. so. And I'll be there from um, uh, four to eight. Okay, that's good. So and if we, anything else I'll be happens, there all day. call me. Yeah, you'll be outside. Oh, yeah, that's you're right. You can't meeting. come in. Right. <laughs> so are we meeting next Monday then? No. Now that you have that sorted out. No, it's not my. I we already it's or was sorted out a long time ago. There's it's a no dreadful meeting next waste Monday. of time, a waste of taxpayer money when Aww. boards of selectmen don't meet. Well, now we're going to move Monday on to night. closing comments. Mrs. Wolseley, would lazy, you like a closing lazy comment? board. Regina, thank you for your service. Rick. Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> it. Rick, thank you for your service. Thank you, Absolutely. thank you very much. Absolutely, uh, and I've, I've, really been, I've worked with you a number of years in a various capacities, yeah. and I think. Uh, you brought a lot to this board, and I think uh, I think uh, we'll look at you from time to time to, for some suggestions. So I appreciate Thank you. that. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the ability to have done it. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. And now Mark is waiting for a motion. I'll make I Mark. Uh, Mark will read his motion, and I'll make the, um, I'll make it. Yes, it's the motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small C reputation and small E litigation. So I'll second. And I. I. And we need the time. Twenty one hundred. Exactly. Thank you, Channel Twenty Two. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias.